reasonable doubt. And this entire case hinges on someone who has quite literally lied to every single person and body he's ever been in front of. He's lied before, I believe it's every branch of Congress. He's lied before his wife. He's lied to bankers. He's lied to all of you in the press. And he's actually lied to that very jury. And yet, he's the only person of relevance that this entire case hinges on. We understand that this is a political persecution. That was evidence today, today, by the Biden campaign themselves holding a rally here. They bring in Robert De Niro, who was shot down, but apparently he needs attention because it's been a while since he's cranked out a good movie. But think about it. They bring out one actor. Remember in 2020 when every A-list actor in the world showed up for Joe Biden and they lined up one by one? Now they get one person. Dwayne The Rock Johnson disavowed, said, hey, you listen, I regret voting for him. Cardi B, all the people that lined up behind Joe Biden understand that he has failed our country. He has failed the citizens of this nation. Frankly, he has failed the world. But the fact that they are holding a rally across the sea from this very witch hunt right across the street tells us exactly what we all knew all along, that it is a political persecution. It is a witch hunt. There is a reason one of the people sitting at that desk was the number three person in Joe Biden's DOJ. I know my father is not allowed to say Matthew Colangelo in his name, right? Because he's been gagged. The president of the United States is not allowed to exercise his First Amendment rights in New York City in this day and age. Does that not tell us all everything we need to know about what we're witnessing? It's a witch hunt they're using as a political fundraiser, just like this very judge's daughter has profited from this very case. It is an insanity. It is an embarrassment. It's an abomination to democracy and to our republic. And yet it continues. Everyone in this case is conflicted, and it hinges on one man who's not just a liar, convicted, someone who's lost his law license, has been disbarred, someone who served jail time for lying before congressional bodies, and that's it. That's where we are today in America. This is a sham, it's insane, and it needs to stop, because if you think for one second that this ends with Donald Trump, you have not been watching what's going on in the Democrat Party in the last few years. They want power at any and all costs, your rights be damned. That can't stand, that can't happen. This sham prosecution, this insanity, this abomination has to stop now. After watching this trial, are you convinced that the jurors are gonna be able to make the right decision? So I sit here today as a son. Forget about politics for a second. I've been in that courthouse with my father almost every single day. And not a single New Yorker is saying, look at murders in the streets, women getting thrown in front of trains, kids getting shot in Times Square, the degradation of this city, not a single New Yorker believes that over $130,000 payment from nine years ago, from eight years ago, that the entire DA's office is lining that courtroom. They're sitting there, they're laughing, they're giggling. This was their moment. This is how they embarrassed Donald Trump. This is legal lawfare. All while this state absolutely melts. Everybody that sits here right now, every single one of you, knows that this is not the same state that we knew 10 years ago. No, knew it was not the same state as we saw five years ago. You have total degradation of New York State because the only thing that Alvin Bragg wants to do, only thing that Letitia James wants to do is criminally prosecute Donald Trump. And they're doing it for one reason. They're doing it because they have a political vendetta. They're all funded by George Soros. That's what this is. This is political lawfare, and it absolutely has to stop. And I watch a man, he's the toughest man I've ever seen, and he endures this nonsense every single day. He sits in that seat, and that's not comfortable. He's never done a damn thing wrong. They tried to impeach him in D.C. They tried to impeach him a second time. They went after his Supreme Court justices. They turned the DOJ, they turned the FBI against him. They couldn't stop him. When that didn't work, guess what they did? They went after his family. They went after me. 110 subpoenas later that I've received. I've never gotten so much as a parking ticket. 110 subpoenas. They went after Don. They went after Laura. They went after little Baron Trump as a young kid, as a young teenager. They went after Tiffany Trump. They tried to make his life hell. And then they weaponized every single DA. They weaponized every AG in every far left area because Biden is incompetent and he's losing in all the polls. Across the board, 
He's losing in, in every quantifiable metric. Our country is going to hell. And this is their answer. Go after him for $130,000. And I want to say sorry to the jury that's in there. This has been the greatest colossal waste of time. I want to say thank you to the NYPD. You have thousands of officers down here, thousands of officers down here that could be protecting our streets. Instead, they're guarding this courthouse against a sham trial. This has cost New York millions and millions and millions of dollars. And New York deserves so much better than this. And I cannot wait for the day that we win. We will. We're right. The entire country knows that this is nonsense. They don't buy it. A poll just came out from the New York Times. Even Democrats, the vast majority of Democrats, know that this case is a sham. And I think we're going to prevail. And I'm just proud of the toughest person I've ever met in my entire life for having the backbone and fortitude to go through this whole mess as uncomfortable as it's been. And I'm proud to have stood there every single second by his side in that freezing cold courtroom against unthinkable odds and a corrupt judge and people making a lot of money and this political witch hunt. Uh, he's an inspiration to me every single day and he'll be vindicated. Thank you very much. Well, I don't know what else to say that hasn't been said, but I think it's pretty obvious after all of the evidence has been presented now, we can very clearly see if you didn't already know that this was never a case about seeking justice. This was never a case about prosecuting an actual crime. This was never a case about protecting the citizens of the city of New York. This is a case about politics, pure and simple. And it is such a shame, as someone who used to live in this city, to see the top law enforcement officer in the city of New York, Alvin Bragg, sitting up in that courtroom, knowing all the resources he pulled together, all the time, all the taxpayer money in this city that was spent to go into this case when, as Eric just noted, you have crime sky high, people being pushed in front of subways, women getting punched in the face in broad daylight in this city, anti-Semitism spewing out of our universities right here in New York City. They're not caring about any of those crimes. They're not pursuing any of those crimes. They care about this, which we know is not a crime. They have not proven anything to be a crime whatsoever, and they will not. Because at the end of this, we all know what it is about. And to the jury, when they realize these people who have wasted five weeks of their time in there, that they have been part of a political game, as New Yorkers, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be upset about it. This is not the United States of America if this is successful. This is Banana Republic type stuff. And if they can profit off it on the other side, so can we. DonaldJTrump.com, if you want to contribute to help Donald Trump become the 47th president of the United States, they cannot succeed. They will not su succeed. We will continue to fight alongside my father-in-law, our 45th and I believe 47th president for what we know is true and right. Thank you.